All right, we are live, guys. I see some of you already in the chat room. If you can hear me okay, um, let's do a quick mic check. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me give it a second to go through go through to YouTube here. There's always a little delay. We didn't really um, hear the last minute, though. <laughs> You're already giving me crap. We haven't even started. <laughs> Great. Uh, Tanya says it sounds good. Hey, Ronnie, can you say something too just to check our mic as well? Just Hola. Sure. Como esta? Uh, that's right. You do know Spanish. We'll have to... Uh, poquito, poquito. We'll use that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Revenue Wrap here with Prof Sales. And tonight, I have the man, the myth, the legend, Ronnie Hart. Um, I He was going to be on the show, what, I guess last week, and had a prior commitment that came up, but we got him back this week, and I'm excited about it because Ronnie has been um, someone who's been a mentor to me, probably more than he knows. Every time I've asked him a question, he's given me an answer. Most of the time, it's been right. No, I'm just kidding. It's always <laughs> been right. <laughs> but, Ronnie, why don't you... Um, uh, introduce yourself and kind of tell everybody who you are a little bit for those who do not know and so on. Yeah, uh, basically, I'm a YouTube content creator, hearts pickers. Uh, sell on eBay mostly, Amazon a little, probably 80, 20 eBay. Um, do this basically full time, me and my wife, um, since probably about two years now. No. Yeah. Give or take two years, maybe a little more, a little, maybe a little less. I'm not sure, but um, you know, it's just daily up and downs of reselling. Um, you know, sometimes I make videos, sometimes I don't. It just kind of, it, it just kind of feels how I feel because you know, after you do this for, like, I've been doing this since like early 2012. It, it just you need something fresh, something different to do, and <clears throat> I'm trying always trying to think of something you know ahead of the curve and. You know, we'll see. So you said you've been doing this since 2012, and that's kind of a long time in the reselling community, believe it or not. Um, so how did you get started in this, Ronnie? What kind of led you to get started in reselling? I've heard your story, but I know there's people watching who have not. So if you if you wouldn't mind sharing some of that, it'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, we I've been off and on selling on eBay since the early, late. It's like 98, maybe, somewhere around there. And um, we were really, I got married. I moved to the Dominican Republic. Now we're up to like 2010. And I kind of needed to get more income. My job just wasn't cutting it. We live in a very expensive area, Cape Cod. It's, it's pricier than other areas that we could have lived in. But this is where I've lived for the last 15 years. It's where I wanted to live. And, you know, I had to find another side income. I, I always work two jobs in the summer. And I forgot how exactly we started selling on eBay. But I, I remember selling my sports cards that I had, like it was just something to get rid of. And and I think I sold some of my clothing and then my wife walked us and wanted to go to a thrift store near the mall. And I've never really been in that thrift store before. And after going in there a few times, I think I found like a Robert, no, what the hell is it? Ralph Lauren shirt, new with tags. It was like three ninety nine. I picked it up. I put it on eBay. I think I, I used to only do auctions and it sold for like 25 bucks. And I was like, oh, wow. And he got the ball rolling. Then you start looking at YouTube. You come across a, you know, a lot of different people at that time. Storks auctions were big. So people like Glenn Cameron or. Then there was people like uh, Redneck Picker and Red Hot and um, I can't even remember half these guys because they haven't made videos in so long, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, and then you start to get little ideas about certain things, but there was really no one doing clothing, you know, for the longest time. You know, I think me and Raken basically started, he started a little bit after me. And we were just talking about clothing. We'd always bounce ideas off of each other almost daily or every other day. You know, it was just something to do. And then before you know it, it was like, oh, I can make money out of this. <laughs> and you and Raken are in pretty much the same area of the country, right? You're, is that yeah. true? 
Yeah, he's about, um, I would say three hours away. We met up before. It's about, we met up halfway. It's about an hour, hour and a half drive, maybe a little less, a little more, depending on the day of the traffic. So you got started um, just kind of by chance, just selling some stuff and so on. But, and you mentioned that you sold a shirt, I think, right? Ralph Lauren, yeah. maybe. Um, we all know Ralph Lauren. <laughs> But what what kind of led you to think that, you know, because when I first met you or saw your videos, at least, I didn't meet you, I saw your videos, but I felt like I met you. Um, I saw your videos and I thought, okay, this guy's selling clothing, and you and Raycon were two of the, the first people that I saw, but what kind of drew you to the clothing part, at least initially? I know you've branched on other things, we can talk about that, but what kind of got you into that, and how did that go at first, maybe? Not so much today, but how did it go when you first started? Yeah, um, when we first started, I might have did a little bit of clothing, but I was more into electronics um, okay. and other things, a lot, very heavy in Amazon. And it wasn't until I kind of got kicked off of Amazon that I had to really turn turn my boat around and go, okay, we're going to go 100% on uh, eBay. And, you know, clothing is in every store. So... The main reason why I went after, I had to find a new niche because our niche wasn't doing that well. I blew the engine in my Tahoe with the car, not Tahoe, the other damn the GMC model, Yukon. I blew the engine and I need, I said like, I don't know, 3,500 or so for a new engine and to have it installed. And I need to get that money. Like, that was a good chunk of change. It's like, okay, I got to build that back up, you know? And I said, okay, I had a really slow month or two on eBay. Because I wasn't finding what I was used to finding. So I had to kind of change it. And I started going, okay, you know what? Thrift stores. You go into a thrift store, 90% of the stores are clothing. So really started to focus. And I would go on eBay every night, one hour maybe, search different genres, no different than going to ties, going to shoes, going to dress shirts. And when you do that, you kind of see the same names come up. I mean, most of the companies... They make suits, they make ties, they make men's dress shirts, and so on and so forth. But if you do the research yourself, you'll actually see, wow, this brand sells really good in suits and sport coats, but their shirts maybe don't sell that well, or mm -hmm. vice versa. Or you'll learn by certain companies will have other brands make their clothing, and those are worth more. So you get very intricate into knowing the certain brands, knowing the ins and outs. You know, like I always say, two of the biggest brands we sell and make probably the most money on is Ralph Lauren and Brooks Brothers. But you have to know what to buy on those two brands because a lot of it is oversaturated and really not worth picking up or too expensive. Thrift stores love to price those brands up. Right, right. And that's and that's interesting you say that because I think um, a lot of resellers out there, especially people who are new and new into clothing and maybe you would agree or, or disagree with this, but a lot of times I see them come into, you know, the chat rooms on these shows or else Facebook groups and, you know, someone will report what they're doing and selling and they'll say, man, what, what are you selling? Tell me what you're selling. Just, it's almost like they want a magic bullet to say, you know, what can I just go out and buy this brand and everything will be fine. Right. I mean, but it's not that simple, is it? It's not that simple. That's the problem. Um, and especially with clothing, you really, you have to learn. You have to take your time. And everybody should do some research. Just because I say something sells doesn't mean my word is gold and you should be trusting me 100%. I used to sit there with a notepad anytime I watched anybody's video. And if they showed something that was interesting, I would mm. research it later in the day. Or maybe I would take an hour or two hours mm. after mm. a week long when I had some time to sit down and relax and look up all the things I've seen over the week that I thought was interesting. And usually it leads you down a rabbit hole. You learn about something else. And it was always a good, you know, a good thing to, um, to do. And I thought, you know, is self-educating yourself, not worrying about a book or someone else in your ear telling you what to look for. You have to really self um, educate yourself. Right, right, and um, that's a great point. I mean, you got to be, you got to do some research. It's not as simple as just people telling you. Um, we have a question here in the chat from Silverhair Stacker. It says, "Ronnie, do you, 
you feel like you have more availability of high-end clothing where you live? Yes, I would say we do. Um, area of the country we live in, being in New England area, but being an hour from Providence, Rhode Island, and Boston, and on the Cape, we do run across a lot more higher-end um, clothing than other parts of the country that we've been to. Also, New York was very good. We do well in New York. I think everywhere in New England I've ever been to, I've done well. Maine, even well. I mean, in Maine, I would consider a little, you know, out in the country a little bit. You know, but there's people that have high-paying jobs, maybe travel into Boston. Boston, you know, is a big financial hub around here area so you know and if you live in boston area it's five hundred thousand plus or even you know more to live there so you have to be making good money and people spend money on clothing unfortunately too um brian the oak brook picker says how did you and chad meet i don't know the answer to this either so i'd like to know <laughs> um how i met chad chad sent me a a message probably i would say at least probably two years ago maybe more on um yeah it was probably more than two years ago it's probably been close to three i guess chad didn't chad had a youtube channel that didn't really have that many subscribers <laughs> um and at the time and i used to shout him out all the time to get him um extra subscribers and he actually passed me <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get no good d but uh you know he, he sent me a message he found a kooji sweater and he was curious on what he should price it at and we talked it for a little bit, and he used to be on the the Toadcast here and there. At the time, it was Sean Murphy had a show. It was kind of more about like just sitting back, relaxing, shooting the shit. And he was having like ten, fifteen live viewers a show, and I came on there a bunch of different times, seeing if I could help out. And you know, it got up there to some viewers after a while it was it was fun but it was cutting into my schedule because i was working at that time a little bit so it was it was really definitely cutting in my schedule cutting in my wife was like mm -hmm, that's gotta go so you know i kind of cut that out for a little bit um but that's how i met him basically you know from that show talking to him and realizing that he was actually a pretty cool guy and then you just start talking to someone you develop a, um a relationship with that person then you know we even hung out in Orlando, you know, and hung out and went to strip stores and stuff like that. He stayed with me when I was down there, him and Kim, and that's been about it. Happily ever after ever since, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things I think a lot of people, because I know for you, you, you and your wife do this full time, correct? Yes. So how does that, and I ask a lot of people this because – you know, people have different approach. Some are part-time sellers, some are full-time, but this is full-time. This is what you do. And I think there's probably a lot of people out there who would like to know, you know, what does that look like for you? I mean, obviously that affects your whole day a little differently, but what is it, you know, what's a typical day look like for you? And how do you, how do you guys, you know, kind of uh, manage your schedules and so on around obviously running a business? Because, you know, in a lot of eight to five jobs or whatever, you know, you know, you go to this place and you do this work and you come home and they send you a check. Um, but this is different, obviously. It's a business and it's largely, you know, because of your own efforts, how well you do. But what does it look like for you guys? Most of the time, it's us just lately. The last few months, it's been, we've been on like vacation mode. I don't know what it is. It's been hard to get the wheels moving um, you know, um, you know, maintaining, keeping everything going, but it's not where I want to be. And I was, you know, I, I listed 20 things today. I'm probably going to list, I'm going to start to get about 75 to a hundred, try to get 75 to a hundred listings up every week because we're talking about, you know, I wanted to relax for a little bit. I was feeling a little burnt out from it, you know, and I, I just wanted to relax a little bit and I got different. I got Amazon bringing me money, YouTube, pays a car payment you know it doesn't make huge amount of money but i pay a car payment off of it um if i make a lot more videos i, I could make a little bit better money but i, I just I, i'm not that kind of person um 
you know, you you never see me <laughs> doing four hour videos just for YouTube money, or oh, I see what you did there. You know, or or, <laughs> or you know, it's just not me. You know, it's 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 something that I think is cool, and you get paid a little bit for your time. But when you start, I think switching too far, I think it becomes like a, you know, you're not keeping it real with yourself in a way, right? Because um, you're just trying to try and push that envelope. But um, you know, it depends. Like now, I have to get back into it. I have to go sourcing. I have to go take some trips in the Boston or or down to Rhode Island or something, and really have to hit eight, ten thrift stores in a day and find fifty, you know, sixty items that I want to sell. You know, I I sell at a higher price point. So mm -hmm. if I can't, there's certain bread and butter things I'll pick up for five to make twenty five or thirty. But a lot of the things I like are the 50 and more. Like so what would, be, what would be an example of some of those? Not to get you derailed, but what would be some of the items? Just in general, what would they be? I, I deal with a lot of sport coats, blazers, jackets, um, even men's jeans. There's certain men's jeans that you can get 40 50 $60 for pretty easily. Um, like I, I listed four pair of men's jeans, four pair of men's pants today. Two of them were citizens for all mankind. I'll get... Probably, I know, I don't remember. There's, citizen, there's three pairs, Citizen for All Mankind and um, Seven, no. Seven for All Mankind? Yeah, and Citizens of Humanity. That's the, <laughs> and then I found a uh, Dom Brownie pair. Hmm. They're like a seersucker, and they're probably going to be like 150 probably when they sell. Wow. So, and I've had those probably for three weeks just sitting on the side. <laughs> I, I just never got around to listen to them, you know. Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm working in the house because I I I would go real hard for a week and then I take two weeks, kind of just limping around, you know. So I, I kind of got I, I got to focus a little bit better since I've been back at the house. When I had the warehouse, it was get up, do the shipping there, do listing. If we didn't have stuff to list, we went out and got it. And that's just how it, you know, went, you know. But right. since we're at the house, it's kind of a little more leisurely. Not having a warehouse is, you know, thousand dollar expense. I don't have to worry about either. Also, um, you know, not that I, I love the warehouse, but it was just a poor uh, choice in my mind because of the situation where it was cold as hell in the winter and it was hot as hell in the summer. I mean, right now, and we had that warehouse with the heat wave that year. I would not be in the warehouse because it was too hot. Right. I couldn't list. You couldn't do nothing. You're sweating just sitting at the computer screen, you know. Yeah. And then whenever it rained real hard, or um, we got a lot of snow on the roof, it leaked. And so it just became a mess. And then my wife didn't like it because they didn't have a bathroom. And so our lease was up, and we made the decision that. You know what? We really want to buy a house. Let's just ditch this thing. Forget it. Let's move on. We have the space at the house. It was nice novelty thing, but uh, let's figure this out better. Yeah, and that's you know I think there's also again you know people out there who would love the idea of a warehouse or you know moving in an office, and I've thought about that too. But it obviously comes with a lot of headaches, right? I mean, the money. The heating and cooling can be an issue, you know, maintenance and so on. Yeah. So it's not all it's not all the roses. Heating the, the heating and the, the cooling was our biggest issue, I would say, because I loved it. And that's the thing. It, it got everything out of the house. I really liked that. It were, really wasn't a big – that $1,000 was probably, I would say, 7 to 8% of our gross sales every month. Oh, so wow. really, So really, it's not a huge – thing when you look at it that way. Even on the slow months, it was maybe 10 or 11 percent. So right. in actuality, that warehouse was not really that big of an expense, you know, from what we were doing business wise. I see people when they're doing 4000 getting a thousand dollar space and I'm like, how the hell are you doing that? Like <laughs> that that doesn't seem right, you know. Yeah, and and you know, and I guess too, and this goes to kind of like what you know your goals are going forward. And you and I've had some discussions about this, but you know, you, you've obviously got some goals, you guys together. You know, what's what's kind of like the future look like for you in terms of reselling in this business, and and where do you see yourself going with it? 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna build it <clears throat> bigger and better. I mean, you know, I, I gotta figure out my my main problem right now is trying to figure out where we're gonna and trying to if we're gonna buy a house or not, you know. Because we mm-hmm. do need a bigger um living you know, we need a bigger house. We live in a two bedroom, two bathroom condo and I just I feel like we've outgrown it, especially with the business. So I, I think it's time to kind of you know, look for that next step. I want a house and, you know, I'm close to finish up on my taxes because I had about $8,000 tax bill. So I have oh. to get that out of the way. Once I get that out of the way, that's how you know you're making money is when you're paying taxes. <laughs> There's the quote of the night. <laughs> you know, that's that's when you know, you know, there's only so much you can write off. You know, right. my average item I pick up is $7. And the, my average selling price is between 50 and 60 and I don't do free shipping really. So you can see where the margin is, unfortunately. And it's like, it's a pain in the butt. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, I will buy a trailer this year. I will buy something to get that amount down because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uncle Sam kind of likes too much money, <laughs> you know, but once I get that out of the way, I can proceed because I wanted to see that all paid for before we get um Approval. Right. Last time we were looking at it, we were looking at like three fifty, you know. And if we look in that price run, there's a lot of nice places in three fifty. But if we move off Cape, we can get a lot more space, a lot more house. Um, I like things with huge garages or barns in the country a little bit more. I can build a, you know, there's a barn that I can furby, excuse me, to build in a house and stuff like that. Right. Right. So, so basically. For- you know, you have a, I think probably a pretty common goal for a lot of people in a business. I mean, you want to improve, maybe improve is a harsh word, but you want to, you know, make an upgrade to your living situation, different house, different location. And that's a pretty that's, good goal. Right? That's right now. I mean, it's going to change. I mean, every year is to get better. You don't want to go reverse. And, you know, I've watched my eBay sales probably over the last two months kind of dip down because I haven't been listing. I also right. cut, I was also at nine hundred to a thousand listings last year, almost all last year. I'm at like five to six hundred this year, like, but I'm still almost doing the same amount of money that I was doing last year. It's down a little bit, but it's not the down the percentage should be. And I think that's part of me picking up and buying better quality stuff and kind of knowing and getting away from um, stuff that is not. Um, stuff that is not as good yeah it's not going to sell for as much money as much profit um you know because chad always likes to say you know you want to you want to never walk by money but you also don't want to pick up money that's a pain in the butt <laughs> you know in terms of listing or you're not going to make a lot off of it or it's going to get a return or, or or whatever but um somebody had a question or two in the chat uh shunk uh, cody I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It says Ronnie, why do we never see your wife? I don't know. Do we see her? I thought she's been in some videos. She's been in a video or two. She was in a clothing haul video, probably mm-hmm. around the winter. Mm-hmm. Sold something, but but um, she she doesn't like getting on the video. She's not a shy person by any means. If you know her, she's very outgoing. Very she. I'm more reserved than she is you know really yeah she's <laughs> more outgoing more funny more rah 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 her and chad have very for kind of very similar personalities but okay. the problem with my wife is my wife has seen other people like with their husband and wives on these videos and you know that just people start to leave negative remarks about their wife or something else and my wife just doesn't really give two crap about, you know, being in, caught in the middle of a feud or caught in the middle of some bullshit. You know what I mean? Right, right. And yeah, it's, that gets me all worked up because I'm the kind of person that if you do that, I may just have to come and find you. <laughs> I believe you would. Um, and I, so, yeah, and, you know, that it's kind of interesting. People feel like they know you probably a little more Personally, they had someone on my YouTube the other day commented that Karn and I, my girlfriend, that we make a great couple, and would we consider live streaming our wedding? 
to YouTube. <laughs> and she said, well, if we do that, it's going to be a gene based wedding. There's going to be genes. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that looks like, but, uh, um, but it was interesting, you know, it was kind of funny. Um, Louis, the Louis, the seller, what's up, Louis says, um, does Ronnie think he will ever be as passionate about Amazon FBA as he is for eBay? Is it the instant gratification of eBay? I assume he's talking about like you get paid right away. Yeah. I mean, eBay, April, my buddy put this the best way in a video not too long ago. Amazon is like working for somebody else, getting a paycheck every two weeks. You send them product, and they come and send you a check two weeks later. You know, and I missed. I started Amazon before I started eBay, selling just video games and stuff like that. And I miss the daily payouts that the Amazon sellers get by one month. Uh. I mean, if you had daily payouts, or you could get daily payouts. Like, come fourth quarter, I mean, you could really tear it up if you wanted to. Instead right. of waiting two weeks every time something sells, you just send that to your bank account. You know, and you could really build a business even so much faster doing it that way. You know, I mean, two weeks is two weeks, but shit, if you could do it every day, <laughs> it would be really good. But yeah. it's, it's just, it's, I, I just, I don't like it. I don't like the the... There's a lot of different things with Amazon that I don't like. A lot of things I've, I've made talk about in some videos. Somebody finds something, nobody's listed on the Amazon. It's mm. very easy to go to Camel, Camel, Camel and try to figure out where that item sells at and what price. Right. And then you see this clown find some puzzle that retails for $20 and they want to get $90 for it and you're shaking your head. And the problem is somebody else finds that puzzle. Someone else finds it. They all follow that one seller. And then you wonder why the thing got a $2 million, a $2 million rank. I send a puzzle in, somebody, the same situation. Somebody's asking like $70, $80 for it. I think it had like a $2 million rank. I looked on Camel, Camel, Camel. It's selling for $35. Bucks. That's where it's sold. It hasn't sold since then when they raised the price up. I sent it in $35. Bucks. It sold within an hour of getting checked in. Wow. And they're still sitting there freaking $90. Nobody's going to buy that puzzle. You want to sit on it? Sit on it. Yeah, and I know some people. Sometimes it's it's that's their real price. And I know sometimes people have repricers and they throw in a high price on every item so they remember to go back and do it. But yeah, you do see some weird prices on there sometimes. You just wonder what what are they doing? Um, this person had a tip. I can't even remotely say their name because it's <laughs> a lot of consonants, consonants <laughs> in a row. Um, so I try to murder that. Um, any tips for new eBayers for keeping tax records? What to keep? Oh, wow. Here we go. Tax. Yeah, Ronnie's a CPA on the side here, right? I got one word for you. Contact the CPA and keep <laughs> track of everything. Get outright. Or no, what is it called? It's not outright. I still go log daddy. into it. Oh, yeah. Go daddy bookkeeping. Yeah. It's go daddy, but every time I log into it, it says, um, just to let you outright users know, soon you won't be able to log in this way. And I'm going, this is the only way I can log in. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I had to go and get, I had to go and call them actually and get a different, uh, a different uh, username and different passcode because yeah, it, it logged out and it wouldn't allow me back in for like a month. And I was like, I got some bookkeeping to get done. But I, I, like, the, I like the bookkeeping part of GoDaddy, but the login part, it's like getting locked out of your Apple ID. There's no hope. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's over. But, um, but I do like it overall. Um, yeah, guys, hit the like button if you're watching. You like this video. Ronnie um, uh, is always an amazing person to have on your show and has lots of knowledge. So I really appreciate you guys watching tonight. We're 53 viewers, which I think is about our peak so far, which is amazing. And um, <clears throat> someone else has a question here. Yvette has a question. How do you catalog items for your listings? Do you assign numbers in your listing in the title or somewhere else in the listing to keep track of your inventory? All right. For most of my clothing, everything goes in buckets. I have um, I have inventory videos of everywhere we've ever had our clothes, if it's at the house or if it's at the storage unit or at the warehouse, how I categorize everything. And everything's kind of hasn't really changed since that point. All dress shirts or casual shirts kind of have uh, totes and they're on shelves. And kind of I'll throw, I'll throw a few different brands together in one tote. And I know, and it's really easy to get to it. I already wrap them up in bags and keep them in there. So when I sell something, I know what box to go to, what tote. 
and then sport coat suits and that kind of thing. I have inventory numbers for them. I kind of wrap them up with the dry cleaner bags that you get and the, put them in the boxes, label on the outside of the box, the um, inventory number. And I just put those on shelves. You know, I don't tape one side of the box. So when I get it or if I'm asked a question, I'll take it out of the box, inspect whatever they want to know and to make sure it's the right piece of clothing. Maybe I made a mental mistake and, you know, there's, there's been a few pieces where it's the same inventory number and I'm like, what happened here? <laughs> what, what did you do here, buddy? I swear eBay sometimes switches the seller SKU numbers around. I swear they do. I don't know. It's the craziest thing. I'm like, there's no way I made that mistake. I'll sell something and then I'll go to, I'll have to sell it again. And I'm going, how did I put it in twice? That's pretty much impossible. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's lots of different eBay or eBay. There's lots of different inventory systems out there, guys. And what Ryan just described to you is one that I use. It's, um, it's very similar. Um, but, but the key, right, Ronnie, is just have a system where you can have it in two or three places just so if you screw it up in one, you can hopefully find it in the other place. I mean, in terms of how you track it and so on. Yeah, I main, mainly, I just have it there. I mean, I'm not going to keep notepads of all this stuff and stuff like that. I mean, there comes a thing where I might misplace something. And it's happened. It might take me 40 minutes to find it. Or it might have been, it, it's something I think that's, at the house and then I look for it and look for it and look for it. It's at the storage unit or, you know, I, cause I keep some of the winter jackets there just cause they're big and puffy and they're in there in the way I have a rack in there. I just throw them in there nothing's going to bother a leather jacket. You know, I'm not worried about anything happening to it and I'm there enough. I go there probably every three or four days a week. So, you know, it's close to our house. So I just go inside, look around and check out the jackets. Nothing ever happens to them though. Here's a question for you, and um, this one, I don't think it's talked enough about enough in the reseller community. So you sell something to someone, and they're unhappy for whatever reason. You know, they, they, they I had this happen the other day. I had a guy who, he bought a, uh, it was a Ralph Lauren Polo sleeveless sweater, and, you know, it's just this little black wool sweater. Nothing fancy. I think I sold it to him for like 24 bucks or something like that. And he sent me a message back and said, oh, this sweater, it's, 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 it's getting wool all over my favorite white shirt. I don't know what's wrong with it. I think it's not authentic. <laughs> and, and um, you know, he wanted to return it. But, you know, and, and I actually ended up satisfying him and, and giving him a return, basically. But what do you do when you have somebody who just, you know, you know they're being unreasonable with whatever it is a request. It doesn't make sense. You know you didn't make that mistake. Whatever it is, it doesn't even matter what the answer. How do you deal with it? Because I think a lot of people get frustrated and tripped up by that, judging by the number of posts I see on, you know, Facebook groups and so on. Yeah, I mean, I've always been the same way with returns because if you want to return something, just return it. I'm good with it. Just bring it back to me. I don't care. You know, I'm not going to um, really get into it. You know, I have a 30 day return policy and I don't care what reason it is. Just return it. I told someone, I don't care if you're a cat. Don't like the way it looked on you. Just return the damn thing. If you, you know, I don't care. Cause he was making like all these crazy things to try to return it. And the guy laughed and he, he never returned the shirt. Actually, <laughs> the return actually closed out on its own. So, you know, I, I just tell people all the time, they argue with me about color or, Something I'm not you're not happy, sir. Just return it to me with no problem. We got a 30 day return policy. I'm so sorry. And that's right. it. I'm I'm the money's there. You know, I've had four hundred dollar returns before. I've had three returns come back in one day for I think it was seven hundred dollars. I was rolling on the floor. I was like, talk about a day where you're in the negative already. Oh that's rough. You know, but I, I take my money out every once a week on PayPal, and sometimes before, I would, it would be, it'd sit there for a month, and I realized the hard way that if there was an issue with your PayPal account, you can't get money out of there. <laughs> it's not a good idea <laughs> to keep your money in there. So every every Monday, I usually pull it out, or every, yeah, it's every Monday, usually after I do shipping. Right, right. So it's the gist of that is, you know, just return the item, move on. Um, it's not worth all this wasted energy to to argue and fight with people usually and sometimes over a small amount, which is what gets me. But, 
Um, Yvette says, uh, what do you do if you sell an item and during prep for shipping you see a defect? Do you message a buyer and disclose and give them options to still purchase or cancel the transaction? <clears throat> I've had this happen a few times, and what I will do is – I will make the label. I will send them the item. I will send them. Or I will just refund their money. I'll say, you know what? I'm sorry about this transaction. I realize it's maybe you can still use it. Maybe you still want it, but I'm going to give you a refund. And I've done that probably three times, not on anything really that expensive. And all three times I was left feedback. One of the guys actually even wanted to send me the money back because he did not feel that it was a, a big enough floor issue and he would have still paid the money for it. You know, it's, right. it's, it's part of business. I mean, you're going to have, if you're in a restaurant, and maybe this is how I think of it, you make a mistake on a restaurant, you're going to most likely pick up the bill for that customer if you're the restaurant manager or so on and so forth. So that's how I think, and that's maybe my customer mm -hmm. service from being in the restaurant, you know, being a chef, being a manager. You have to make sure your customer is happy. You know, I'm not going to go over to the customer. What the hell do you mean? That's not medium rare. That's medium rare. I mean, that's not how you're <laughs> going to treat your customer. And you have to think, you know, and I think too many people get behind computer screens. They act like assholes and so on and so forth. And it's because you're not verbally talking to somebody face to face. You know, people say a lot of stupid things behind computer screens. <laughs> do a lot of things that they would never do in life. Right. You see it happen all the time nowadays yeah totally totally agree um yeah you can't get so caught up in that and and you know people can be having a bad day on the other end of that transaction and they take it out on you and is that right no it's not right but you know you don't really gain anything by trying to meet all this negative energy they're giving you with a bunch of negative energy too it just doesn't do anything it just makes you feel bad too um how do you feel about the whole slow dime or fast nickel approach to selling items? Obviously clothing sometimes is a little bit long tail depending on what you're selling, but you sell a lot of other items now too. And I know Chad has a, for instance, has a fast nickel approach. How about you? I'm more of a slow dime seller. Um, when I started, I was more the, the auction guy. I, and I, what happened was I sold a video game for like 11 bucks. It was probably a video game that should have sold for 50, 60 bucks. Ooh. So like I, and then I didn't think about it no much. You like, you know what? I had a dollar into it. No big deal. <clears throat> you figure you're going to take a, you know, you're going to take a hit somewhere. The next week I had a one or two things that didn't sell. And I kind of got, was like, you know what? I'm going away from auctions. I'm going to do buy now. And then it was kind of more the quicker nickel when I started. But when I started to make this a business, I had to – I think you have to – there's many different ways to look at it. And everybody has their own business plan. Everybody's going to have um, their own way of doing business. And I don't think there's a right or wrong way. It's just whatever way works for you. I'm a slow, slow dime seller for the most part. Let's say I'm asking $100 for something and it should sell at $100. But I had it listed for six months. Somebody offers right. me 50 bucks. I'm taking that offer most likely because it's been six months. Maybe I wait six months more to get what eighty dollar offer. Like I could already turn that money over ten times probably before right. that next offer comes in. You know, and just sometimes things just don't sell as well as you think they will, or who knows? Sometimes your item just everybody else's item selling, but yours is not. And you're like, come on, what's going on? <laughs> you know, and you look it up in the rank, the rate of ranking your own and your stuff's coming up high, but you're not selling. There's so many different factors that play into it, you know, and I, I think everybody needs to create their own lane and figure out their own way of doing things and what works for them. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree. I mean, everybody's business is a little different and their goals and so on. And um, it's not a right or wrong answer to that. There's just an answer that's right for you. And maybe even at the moment, like you said, you were – one method, one point, and now a little bit different. Um, all right. Well, you and I had talked about this subject <laughs> when I, I uh, approached you about coming on the show, and that's this idea about haul videos, And um, which, as we know, in the reseller community, there's a lot of different uh, videos out there. And, um, 
you know, you had mentioned to me that you tend to do a lot more haul videos, or at least you have in the past, maybe not as much now. And, um, you know, what is that? What, what do you think is the appeal for you to do a video? And what do you think like a viewer really gets out of it compared to say, you know, just a video on some other topic? What are you doing? Okay, and my wife is being crazy at the moment. But uh, <laughs> she's getting on camera. <laughs> but um, when it comes down, I, I love all videos. That's what I started making videos of on eBay. And, you know, like when you watch a whole video, and this is what I talked about, taking the piece of paper and the pen and mm -hmm. just watching and seeing what people are talking about and getting an idea of what's selling and what doesn't sell. You know, because anybody can say this sells. It To me, a whole video is no different than a sales update video in a way. Because sales update video, somebody could show something that sold on an auction. To, they just had the right person, two people fighting for it, and it might have won $50 more than where it should have went. Right. You know, I've gotten, pr like, the top price for something in two months on um eBay and it's like that won't happen for another two three months, you know, and everybody might be well Ron got $500 for this I'm gonna try to get $500 for mine and it might not work, you know So I love all videos though because I think it's a way to learn and expand, you know, I watch All different people's haul videos. I mean like terminal Terminal 99 I've learned so much from his videos you know, he was the one that turned me on to uh, looking for Griswold frying pans and a lot of other things. And I've made thousands of dollars just off of frying pans. And that's just one thing I've learned from him. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like anything else. You're just watching what somebody else is getting. I don't think it's technically bragging, you know, because you see a lot of people that pick it up from something for one dollar and they say, oh, I'm going to sell this for six. I don't think that's bragging, <laughs> you know. So I mean, it's just people. People want to people want to connect with other people that are selling. And for a lot of people, YouTube is their only outlet. They their family doesn't get it. Their friends think they're freaking crazy, maybe for going to the thrift stores and shopping stuff. So a lot of people, this is their only way to show somebody else, or they 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 show excitement. They want to show other things. They want to show people. They want to be part of something bigger. That's why Facebook groups have blew up. The YouTube, every wave that's come after is bigger and bigger. You know, coming into. Um, you know, every year that the waves are bigger and bigger of YouTube new sellers coming in. Yeah, I mean, you hit on a couple things there. Um, one, you hit on, you were talking about research. And, you know, I guess I have no issue with someone. I don't have an issue with haul videos anyway. I mean, I've done some haul videos, and, and one of my most watched videos is theoretically a haul video, I guess, in some ways. But, um, just as long as people are using it as a research tool and not as a I don't know. I think there's kind of the you kind of fall into the shiny object syndrome. Sometimes people will think, you know, oh, I'm just going to walk out tomorrow and find a thousand dollars worth of items, you know, at my local Goodwill. Well, you might, but it's not. That's not the norm, you know. Or you know, or finding the um, the, the Griswold like you found. I mean, that's that's an unusual circumstance. And as long as people understand that, you know. I made a comment the other day on one of my videos. I said, I don't really look for the home runs when I'm out there. I'm looking for a bunch of base hits because they're more common and you can kind of find them over and over and over and over. And Chad made a good point too. He said, you know, the thing with haul videos is you see what people buy, but you don't always see what they sell them for, um, which is a good point. I think, you know, you got to, you got to take it with a grain of salt. I just think as long as people use them as a, a tool, to go out and do the research like you were talking about, writing down brands, looking them up, you know, seeing, okay, well, this guy says that this this item is worth 500 bucks, but I see one that sold for $500 a year ago maybe, but ever since then they've sold for like 200, you know, so just keep it, take them with a grain of salt. But I, I, I guess I got the reputation now that I hate haul videos, which is not true. <laughs> so I just want to say that for the 18th time, I, I do not say hater. I'm just a hater. Um, so, Hashtag a no more haul videos. <laughs> I'm gonna start a I'm gonna start a Twitter account. Um, 
let's see. There, there was a bunch of comments on this, and I figured there would. That's why I want to kind of leave it till the end. It says, uh, um, uh, gosh, I'm trying to scroll back up here a little bit. Um, Cherry Picker said, or Cherry Vintage says, uh, do you think in part you're not in a hall videos because you choose to only sell jeans? That's not true. I don't <laughs> only sell jeans. <laughs> but that's a fair question. Um, <laughs> See, this is, I knew this She's was like, yo, you, you might learn something more than just Gene told me. <laughs> <laughs> there is? <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I agree with Ronnie. I'm a pirate. I always want to look for treasure. Thrifty says, haul videos make me want to go shopping. Fair enough. Uh, but that could be a bad thing, Tanya. Um, uh, I love a good brag. Ain't nothing wrong with it. When someone gets a home run, I'm really happy for him. Yeah, and I'm happy for him, too. It's not a like I'm like, oh. I hate it that they. I hate that Ronnie sold a pan for thirteen hundred dollars or whatever the hell it was. Fourteen. Up on it. Oh, oh, excuse me. I, I shorted you a hundred bucks. Uh, Jason's salty than a pretzel right now. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, so you know, there's a lot of. Oh, oh gosh, I can't scroll up fast enough. They were coming fast. Hallways are the fastest way to expand your knowledge of what to look for. Yeah, that's true to a point, but. You know, and you would agree even with that Griswold, Ronnie. Okay, all right. If I happen to see a Griswold, I should look it up. But how many Griswolds are you going to run across like that? You know, it's not that yeah, common. That, that's that's the holy grail piece. That's like the top one you could find. But like I did in the other video, I showed a lot of different other cast iron pans that do well and what to look for. And you have to. That's where part of research comes in, because if you get it. You know, you shouldn't automatically think, oh, any Griswold is going to be worth a thousand dollars. You know, you really should do research. And there's little numbers on them. They're they're like date codes, or I don't know exactly what they are. I can't remember now. I remember, or factory stamps or whatever. They're like you'll say like seven ten, and that's the easiest way to. It takes you two seconds if you have an eBay phone. I mean, an eBay phone. If you have a phone with the eBay app, you know, you just go on there and walking around with the eBay phone. <laughs> <laughs> eBay selling phones now? <laughs> it's just eBay. Hey, by the way, I sent some items for, into Amazon FBA today in the eBay boxes, the free ones. <laughs> I didn't have any more boxes. <laughs> I put I put the eBay tape on them. <laughs> nice. I figure Amazon won't give a damn, right? What do they care? Yeah, I mean, you know, guys, in, in all seriousness, though, there's nothing wrong with, with haul videos. I'm just saying, and I think Ronnie would agree with this, just make sure you go beyond that. Make sure that you don't say, I mean, if you only watch haul videos and said, that's how I'm going to go pick or thrift, oh, you know, that. first of all, you couldn't watch enough to really, you know, anyway. But um, <clears throat> Cherry says, why do you only sell jeans? Do you think you'll ever sell anything else? Well, it's not true that I only sell jeans, Cherry, but... Um, I am doing a gene challenge right now, but I, I have sold many other things on eBay and I also sell on Amazon and I don't sell any jeans on Amazon um, for the most part. Although I know you, Ronnie, have had some luck with uh, clothing on Amazon. So what, is, what has that been like for you selling? What's the difference there between Amazon and eBay for selling clothing? I, I would say for the last two years, no, less than two, a year and a half, we've sent some clothing into Amazon. Um, has to be new with tags. Make sure all the tags they get there. Most of that clothes we picked up either from TJ Maxx or Marshalls or those kind of stores. Um, but even with those stores, you have to be careful. It has all the tags because a lot of times they'll have stuff with no tags on it. You know, you'll think you're getting a new, new shirt. It might still be new, but they don't have the tags. They'll have their... Uh, what do you want to call it there? Marshall's tag or whatever on it, but they won't have this tag. <laughs> you know, so you, you want to make sure, and you want to find things that sell brand names. Um, I saw a bunch of guest stuff on there, actually, and we actually had it on eBay for a while. It wasn't selling. I, there was a bunch of dresses, like these summery spaghetti string-like dresses. And we were into them for real cheap, like 2 or $3 each. I was trying to get like $35, $40 from on eBay. When I saw it, I sent them to Amazon. I was selling it for like $60. And they wow. were selling, I had about 10 of them. They were selling probably one a week, one every other week. You know, it wasn't like the quickest selling thing. But when you're into it for that little, they were selling pretty well. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna answer this question real quick, then I'm gonna ask you another question on that because I was thinking of something while you were talking about that. Uh, Swamp says, what's the challenge about? The challenge about Swamp is to provide enough money to make a full-time income selling only jeans on eBay. Um, and my goal to do that is to have 2,500 listings and have a 1% sell through. So if you search on my channel, you'll see some other videos about that. I've been vlogging my results every day. So total, uh, so total accountability and to totally open about what my results have been and what they will be. And I know Ronnie's hanging on every word I say about that because he wants to do, no, he doesn't want to do that. Um, he would never want to do that. He's like, no. But what I was going to ask you about Amazon was, do you think that Amazon, because I'm kind of curious about this, Amazon, selling clothes on Amazon is obviously different because usually you're not providing additional photos, you're just selling against the ASIN. Right. Do you, do you think that Amazon's going to be a big player? I mean, they are a big player already, but do you think they're going to be a monster player like they are in some categories, but in clothing? Mm -hmm. You could, there could be problems down the road because as Amazon gets bigger, of course, and these brands see the potential. A lot of brands have already branched out, and you can't sell their items on Amazon. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, Tommy Hilfiger. Um, uh, Under Armour, right? Think Under Armour. No, Under Armour you can sell. North Face, oh, okay. I think. Um, I, I, I'm not sure of all the brands. I used to have a list of them. You know, if oh. I see them in the store... I know all I can't sell that brand. And sometimes when you just scan with your phone, it will tell you that you can't sell that item. You know, um, we sold a bunch of Vineyard Vine kids clothing there. Hmm. Um, like sh not kids, but like child, like older teens. Yeah. Um, but we've cool. sold a lot of kids clothing and stuff like that. And I just trying to figure out if I have the bags. And I have these bags here that I put them in. I fold them up real nice and I put them in these bags. They have the suffocation already on them. They seal and I put the stuff in here and make sure it's nice and tight and, you know, that way it keeps clean and because you have to bag it up some way or another. And I got, I don't remember where I got these bags from. I got like 500 of them like a long time ago. You're so off of yeah. eBay, I know that much, <laughs> but where I know, I don't know. Um, Yvette has a question, says, uh, Ronnie, if you couldn't find the higher price items you find, how would you compensate? Uh, that was a question asked by the Judgment Day earlier in the feed. Okay, sorry I missed that Judgment Day. Yeah, it's, it's no different than I had to adapt when I couldn't find no more electronics. I had to take on another niche. Now, if I couldn't find clothing no more, I would jump to another niche. Maybe it would be, maybe I would focus harder on Amazon. Um, maybe it would be books. I would find a way to get by. And that's all that there is. It would be one way or another. Maybe it would be vintage advertising signs, um, something that I know a lot about. I love doing, but it takes a little bit more money, you know, where I tie up hundreds of dollars in a sign to double or triple my money. You know, there's there's always something there that can be done. Maybe it's cars. You know, maybe I go back to selling cars. So it would always be something. It's just right now clothing will go for a little while to it gets me to another stage. And then most likely clothes will die down and you jump on another wave and move on to something else. You know, but I'm not one of these people every six months I'm jumping from item to item to item. Like, I'm going to do Amazon, I'm going to do eBay, and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and then jump back and forth. I, I have to stay focused on something and really just keep going at it and try to be the best I can at it. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and everybody's got a different way because somebody, maybe it was Louie talking about, oh, yeah, selling the same thing for a long period of time. And... I, I agree with that too, Louis. I mean, selling the same thing for a long period of time uh, is not a lot of, is not really exciting to me. And, but sometimes you can find different challenges within that item or in that, that niche or genre and so on. But um, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do this. There's, you know, I was reading a story today on, I think it was maybe the Reseller Society. Someone was reposting about a kid who started selling DVDs on, you know, Amazon or uh, eBay. And, you know, at first he was not doing that well. He did it while he was in college, but 
he got to the point where this guy's selling like you know hundreds if not thousands of DVDs a month and he's making some pretty good money doing it but I guess it comes back to you know what what's your point in doing it? and like so would you say you know Ronnie that you have to love what you sell or is it more of a means to an end for you or some combination or what does that look like for you I don't know I we stumped them ha ha shows over we stumped them <laughs> I mean I'm just I just do something to I don't want to do it no more and move on to something else you know it's I don't know. So you can you could move on from you know what you're doing now. I guess is what you're saying. Eventually, you know, at some point, it's not a you know. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's different for all of us, right? It's yeah. like how do how do you decide that point? Like when you decide, all right, I'm done selling that at least for a while. Yeah, I think eBay right now the clothing thing is just to get me going. Like I've talked about with the wife that it might be time to ramp Amazon up. You know, also on eBay, ramp eBay back up to a thousand listings, ramp Amazon up to God knows whatever I can do it. You know, whatever you find, list it, get rid of it, sell it, flip it, move it. You know, till I get to the point where maybe I can have that money to open my own car dealership. You know, or you know, that that's probably the end goal at the end of it. Or maybe it's to move to the Dominican Republic and open a little beach freaking beachside uh, restaurant and just, you know, serve burgers all day. I feel like the Las Terrenas Burger Company or something. That's <laughs> it, you know, be in the ocean that's all day, watching the women go by, and I'll be happy. <laughs> it's a simple thing. That's cool, man. That's If that's your dream, I mean, I, I know. don't I don't see I myself selling clothing for the next, I, I would say, five years. I would say within five years, I will be somewhere else probably sooner. You know, right? It, it's it, I think it's a thing where you have to move on to something else. You have to kind of, you know, because eventually it will get too crowded or I'll move and I won't be able to find the same stuff that I'm able to. Or maybe I'll just feel burnt out, you know, because as much as I like the clothing, it's not what I love to do. I do it because it's abundant. It makes me a living. And I love the treasure hunt. You know, I, I just love going out finding stuff. You know, I when I find nice pieces of clothing, it's it's cool and it's fun. But when you're not, it's kind of like my wife will say, I get pissy when I'm out and I'm not finding shit. I get moody, especially if I'm, I'm spending like a whole day out. Like, I start not finding or finding what I want to find for that day. I get hissy right you know and right. I, I think most of us probably do most of us are like damn we're wasting today like what's going on where's my stuff who's been taking my stuff yeah and, and i mean i think that's a pretty natural reaction right and you know that the next item or set of items is probably just around the corner but man sometimes it can seem like it is never going to get there <laughs> especially Especially if you're out hitting yard sales and estate sales and garage sales, and you know you're just finding like the same silly stuff over and over, and it just uh, estate um, sales are the, are the best. I, I just I love estate sales, and I haven't really been to auctions, so maybe one day auctions will play into that factor. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's been some auctions I've been trying to get to, but hey, it's just timing. You know, yeah. wrong time, wrong day, other stuff going on. I've been to a business auction, but you know, it was real iffy um, on a lot of the stuff because even though you could pick it up and look at it and 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 so on, it was just a lot of like random business stuff. And I'm thought, man, I don't know, I'm gonna have to sell this locally if at all because it's got some wear and you know, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. I'd go back to one, but you know, it was kind of different. It was like in an office building where this business had. I don't know what this guy did. He had every tool, like little tool known to man. And I don't know what he made exactly. He made, he, I know he made these glass uh, water display things. They had like neons going through them. It was wild. But um, 
you know, it was kind of interesting. They're kind of fun to go to. I actually picked up a couple tripods. Believe it or not, was all I picked up. So, um, anyway, um, okay. Well, that's that's cool, man. Um, let's see if there's any more questions here in the end. Uh, we're getting close to the end here, guys. Shunk Akodi says, "Do you think brands will not let you sell on eBay as they are doing on Amazon? Like they'll become restricted on eBay?" Right. I I just don't know if that's gonna ever happen. It could. I don't know. I don't know what Amazon. They have their Vero account thingy, and it's doing. You know, it'll flag you for anything. I got flagged once for a uh, Arteryx windbreaker. Hmm. And when I called them on it, they said they didn't know why it was flagged. You know, and then I had other people flag my account for certain reasons that were spiteful and uh, right. Not really for any specific reasons. That's happened a few times where I think it's funny. You get eBay, uh, eBay on the phone, and they're like, "Oh, well, it seems that you know somebody goes through and flags fifty or items as being uh, what's the word, unauthentic or whatever it was, <laughs> or a replica." Yeah, yeah. You know, and they they see that they're not too far from you. They realize <laughs> that most likely it's a competition person trying to uh, you know mess with your business and I've had that happen before and there's no way to protect yourself I mean you, you can just hope that eBay you know does the right thing and that's it and eBay has done the right thing in my in my cases um you know and you might not go your the right way with a case or something like that but for the most part eBay is understanding and good right yeah and that that's the thing and I know they get it they catch a lot of grief from the reselling community but you know, eBay is trying to run a business too, and they don't want to. They're not purposely sending out to ruin your business as a seller, <laughs> but they got to protect buyers as well and protect other sellers from crappy sellers and sellers who don't follow the rules. So, you know, they're running a business just like we are, and it's 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 tricky sometimes. Um, all right, let's make this the last question. Then James Meyer said, "Relist versus sell one like this." Sell similar, I think. Yeah, yeah, I always do sell similar, always. Um, it's, it's too easy for me to do, especially because the way I list, I list in lots of items. So I'll list 10 dress shirts at one time or 10 casual shirts. They'll be like polos. So, and I'll try to put all the certain ones together if they're Peter Millar or Foot Joy. So when I'm going through it, I just sell similar. I already have most of my stuff already printed in there. Change the pictures, change a few words around. And go through the listing. I mean, here and there, I do make an error because I am trying to be fast. Because I, right. I can get listings up in sometimes five minutes if I'm really quick at it. And you know, you start doing that at a really fast pace. You you can forget to change the color, or you may not remember to change the uh, measurements. You know, and it happens. But you know, most of the time, people are good. You're right. Right. Absolutely. Um, okay, so all right, guys. Well, listen, um, we're definitely in an hour, and I try to keep my shows an hour to respect my guest time. Ronnie, I want to say thank you very much, my friend. You know, you are like a brother from another mother for me. Um, I always, you know, I start off the show by saying Ronnie always answers every question I have, even if he says I have no freaking clue, <laughs> <laughs> which he rarely says, by the way. But um, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Um, guys, please, of course, hit the like button if you like this video and you like hearing from Ronnie. Also, look down below in the about of this video. There is a link to Ronnie's channel, Hearts Pickers. You can find all kinds of info there. He is tied in with uh, Pete, the Craigslist Hunter, and Chad, the Golden Finger Picker, too. They do shows together quite often. And um, you can learn a lot from all three of those guys. And Ronnie, my friend, I just want to say thank you very much, and I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me on. Um you know, I hope some people uh, learned and or got ideas or whatever not be and uh, just had some fun. I mean, that's just how I do things. We all do it differently. Sir, we do. All right, my friend. I will talk to you later. Everyone in the chat and so, so on, thank you for watching. And uh, leave me a comment down below once the video posts. And uh, everyone take care and have a great night. And we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.